day 20, November 21st. I'm back in the saddle again, going after some does today, and uh, just spend some time in the blind, relax, uh, hopefully kill a couple of does, see if there's any other mature bucks around that we haven't uh, found with the trail cameras or while hunting this season. The uh, Technically this isn't day 20. Uh, I did hunt a few days without the camera and uh, wasn't able to kill any does and I didn't see any mature bucks. So the spots that I went to were, I won't say they were dead, just the opportunities didn't exist for a shot. Uh, the spot we're going to this afternoon is one that we can only hunt with an east wind or a southeast wind. And we've got the east southeast today. And it's down in the bottom of this little valley. And it's a redneck blind down in the valley. We'll go ahead and keep, keep the windows closed on it right up until the time that a shot is imminent. And then we'll crack open a window and, and uh, keep as much scent contained inside the blind as we possibly can. The ozonics helps a lot. So when we do crack the window, when the time comes, we'll flip the ozonics on to make sure that the scent that we do put out gets at least somewhat degraded and, and uh, destroyed by the ozonics. Uh, that's the plan for this afternoon. It's a spot where there's usually a lot of doe traffic. Uh, this, the blind is sitting over the top of, we call it the tube. There's two little fields and a ditch that runs between them. We put a tube in there so that we can drive farm equipment back and forth between those two little fields. In the process of doing that, of course, we created this killer deer funnel and the redneck blind sits about 15 yards from that. These little isolated spots like this can be really tough to hunt because the deer uh, can be out in them at all times of the day. I'm not sure that you could come down here and not have deer in one of these little small fields. I mean, they're technically not even food plots. This one was planted uh, to my right couple of years ago to clover, but we didn't maintain it very well, so it kind of grew up to weeds. I know there's a lot of clover left in there, so I'm sure that's what those deer were eating. Then on the left, this one we haven't planted in a couple of years, there's some wild volunteer clover in there, and then that's what the deer on the left side were feeding on when we came down in here, but um, we pretty much blew everything out coming in, unfortunately. So rather than talking about what I've been seeing and, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, what I hope to see this evening, I'm going to talk about the stage of the rut that we're in and a little bit about how you hunt these last couple of weeks of November if you still have a tag. Um, basically, I always figure that the rut has got two peaks. The first peak of buck activity, not breeding, is one peak of breeding that's in the middle of November, typically in the Midwest. But there's usually two peaks of buck activity. The first one is somewhere around the uh, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, you know, I've always settled on the 7th as being the best day of the rut. Uh, that peak is a nice high peak. Lots of bucks on the move. The does are starting to come into estrus, but not very many of them are in, so the bucks are really looking. They're fired up and ready to go. And then you get that low where a lot of the does are in estrus in the middle of November. That kind of gives you a little, little drop off in the activity. And then once those does start to come out of estrus again, where most of the does have been bred or their cycle is over, uh, they're only in for roughly, I think, a week. So once their cycle ends or they're bred, uh, then you get a little bit of uh, a second bump up in buck activity. And this one's not nearly as strong as the first one. Generally, you don't get the little bucks on the move during the second peak you will get a few of the older, mature bucks that didn't expend all their energy early in the rut. You know, those young bucks will run themselves ragged. I mean, we had three-year-olds that we were watching this year that we'd see them five different times over the course of one day from two or three different tree stands. I mean, they were just covering ground. So, I mean, those bucks are gonna be exhausted by the second peak of the rut. But the mature bucks that only engage in the breeding, and they aren't really that involved with all the crazy chasing and running and stuff that takes place before that, uh, they usually have enough left in them that you'll see some extra movement in this November 20th to the 26th time frame from those deer. We've had good success over the years killing older age class bucks during that time. Usually you're still working with those last few does that are in estrus, so you're still trying to find the places where the does are concentrated. So you're still thinking doe bedding areas in the mornings and 
the areas where the does move toward in the evenings, which would be the doe feeding areas, or you can stay in the doe bedding areas all day because sometimes those bucks will just cruise through those even you know later in the evenings trying to see if they can pick up the scent of something. Uh, so that's uh, that's kind of where we find ourselves now. I'm gonna you know I'll update uh, in these daily video blogs as we go through. I'm gonna continue to try to hunt does pretty much every day, right on through until the firearm season comes in, and once this 26th of November kind of expires. Uh, then the bucks really do go back to food. You just don't see hardly any rutting activity, at least in the places that I've hunted. Uh, everything is back on food again. So, uh, gave me a little something to talk about. Since there aren't any deer coming out in here, we got them all spooked. But if you still have a tag in your pocket, uh, don't give up yet. The rut can still produce a mature buck for you. I'm down to my last 20 minutes here this evening and things have been pretty slow uh, after bumping those does coming in i felt like maybe that was going to be the only show in town today but uh, a doe and a fawn showed up at uh, 50 to 55 yards a little bit too far to shoot and then just a few minutes ago a really nice two-year-old came out and chased them off that's going to be definitely a buck to keep an eye on because i'd say that was you know, the type of deer, um, if you go back to some of the bigger deer that we've hunted over the years, that's what they looked like when they were two. People are going to think that was a three-year-old, but I, I'd almost guarantee you that was a two-year-old buck. So that's good. Like I said, um, you know, it, it takes a few of those superstars when they're young in order to grow up to be the kind of bucks that are fun to hunt when they're five or six years old. If anything else pops out here, uh, I'm going to I'll bring that to you uh, in the rest of the video blog here. Otherwise, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to hunt tomorrow night. we got some family stuff we need to do, but uh, Zach and I, since he's done hunting, uh, and I'm done hunting other than does, we might just stage up a couple of tips or something right around the office uh, just to keep the video blogs moving. So check back again tomorrow. We'll have something for you.